Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I want to take you on another mushroom hunt with me. If you're willing to go, it's probably going to be a quickie tonight. I just have an hour or two, but I'm just in a small patch of woods here, but it's usually a pretty productive patch for me for morels. I noticed on my way in that we actually already have a few yellows coming up. So I have to be really careful where I step because the yellows are really small and I can easily miss them. It's like you get down on the ground all of a sudden you see there's one, there's one, there's one. So I got to be careful I don't step on any yellows because I want to let them get a little bigger. I'm hoping to pick them in maybe four or five days, but bugs out. But uh, tonight I'm specifically looking for the half free morels. The half free morels, Morkella punctipace, they always come up a little bit before the yellows and they're doing the same thing this year. They've been up for, I don't know, four, five, six, seven days, been up for a week or so. And there's some really nice ones out. It's been raining like every day. It's been perfect weather conditions. So we should be able to find some really nice half freeze. So I'm gonna get walking into the woods here, following some deer trails. And hopefully we get a high morel to tick ratio today. The ticks have been really bad too, but uh, we'll see if we can find some nice mushrooms. That is a beautiful half free morel there. Another one there. Let's see. Got another, another one poking up over there. And over there. I don't know if you guys can see that one. That one's kind of hiding under a leaf, but there's another one. Oh, and then there's another big one over there too. See, you take a look, they have a hollow stem. You can see all those little conical points on the stem. If you look at a cross section, you can see where the cap is actually attached to the stem about halfway up the cap. That's why it's called a half free morel. They do look similar to a verpa species called verpa bohemica, but with the verpas, they won't be attached halfway up the cap like this. With verpas, they're only attached way up the tip and the rest of the cap just droops over the stem. All right, I didn't pick them all. Left some little ones to grow, but got two there. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. A couple more small ones that I didn't pick, and that was just a little six by six area right where we first started here. So this could be pretty epic. Not surprising with the moisture we've had lately, but that's a good start. Here you can see the base of this tree. There's a huge cluster of Caprinus glistening inky caps, and the deer ate those right down to nothing. Like most morels, these little half frees are really good at hiding too, so you always have to watch where you step. But this one's actually, there's two of them here. I didn't even see this other one until I started filming. So you got this one right here hiding under a leaf right there. And then you got this one over here, same thing. Another nice one there, kind of a weird looking little dude hiding under that vine. This is pretty typical of where I find them. We're still pretty early in the spring. This is uh, the first week of May. So we have a little bit of understory, nice, rich, moist soil. See, we have some skunk cabbage coming up. It's not like soggy soil. You don't want to be in the real soggy stuff, but nice, rich, moist soil. Not a ton of understory, just kind of scattered understory and mixed hardwoods. Got some poplar, some maple around. A lot of poplar here. Uh, I do seem to find a lot of half freeze around poplar. I know some people find blacks around poplar as well. I haven't found blacks in my immediate area, but uh, half freeze seem to like them as well. There's one right there. One right there. These are pretty nice size half frees too. They're definitely smaller in stature than the yellows, but the flavor is just as good in my opinion. Nice one there. That's a real nice one there. Another one here. This 
is what I'm talking about with the deer. Maybe sometimes they just kick them as they're moving through, but I think they definitely browse these and just kind of nip the tops off them sometimes and eat them. See another stem over there with no cap. And yeah, see, I almost stepped on that one right there. Talked to you guys in my last video about the ostrich fern. Here's another little patch of ostrich fern. Seems to be a good indicator of morel habitat too, and you can see the fronds are still very young, they're just unfurling. So that gives you a good idea of where we're at in the progression of spring when all these half freeze are up here. Just a small patch of ostrich fern, but always seems to pop up in good morel spots in my area anyway. So you guys some of these yellows I saw on my way in. I'm actually trying to kind of stay away from the apple trees because I don't want to step on these. They are so good at hiding. But nice little yellow coming up there. One over there. Let's see. There's actually about a dozen in this area, but a lot of them are really small. Like just coming up. Let's see if I can find you a couple more. There's two over here. That are yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like there's two right next to each other there. And the biggest ones in the patch. And that first one I showed you, that smallest one. These guys were about that size only a day ago so they're growing fast we'll come back in here a few more days do some yellow picking it's always a crab shoot leaving them you know sometimes you're better off just picking them when you find them i thought oh yeah i'm gonna come back and pick those in a few days and come back and they're gone <laughs> either the critters ate them or somebody else found them or like some of them back in here came up a little earlier. They're almost like past prime. I'll show you. So these two here. It's a nice one. Nice one there. And if we come over to oh yeah. Some that one's been kicked over there. Another nice one there. We've got a nice patch going here. See how that stem is kind of turning orange? It means it's kind of past prime going the other way. So usually those I'll just leave let them spore out but I don't know if you can see over there there is probably half dozen of them maybe seven or eight I can see right there big ones back in there some of them have been it's like browsed by the deer or kicked by the deer missing their caps but still a really nice spot here They are everywhere in here. Ooh, there's a tall one over there. Look at that one. Calling to me. Oh man, there's like three behind it too. All right, I'm just gonna pile them up. We'll see how many we can get in this one little area. There's a big boy over there. Look at that one. That's a beauty. one here going in this little patch of grass that's cool here because the stems are hollow these break off pretty easy they're really easier just to pick by hand that's a nice one right there about four fingers high Another one right on the other side of this log. One there, one there, one there. I don't even want to say it yet, but I have not seen a tick on me as of yet. Doesn't mean there's not one there, but look at this, one there.
Count them out here. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, thirty, thirty-three. Thirty-three half freeze out of this one little patch. And I almost didn't even come in here. Glad I did. So this is my last spot here. Again, it's mixed hardwoods. This area actually had a lot of ash, which are all dead now, thanks to the emerald ash borer. Kind of a bummer, but we have some oak in here too. You guys can see all the oak leaves on the ground. Some poplar in here too, some thorn apple. And they don't come up in here every year, but when they do, you can find some nice little patches, so. I'm going to take a peek around. Again, we're kind of near a creek here. Some nice, rich, loamy soil, like I showed you in my last video. And perfect, perfect morel habitat. Not real heavy understory, just kind of sparse understory. Seem to be the highest percentage spots. It's probably going to be our last patch, but this is an awesome patch. This is going to be the best one of the day here. Pick them all off. Probably not the most in quantity. Probably not going to beat our 32, but we definitely have some quality here. And just like last time, as you start looking around, they are everywhere. Line them up on this perfect little mossy log here. This one's got a little funk on the cat, not too bad cat funk you get into a patch like this they start kind of appearing everywhere for you almost got to get down on your hands and knees just start looking out away from you and you'll see them popping up everywhere there's usually more than you think there is in my experience One more jumbo. I almost missed over here. Two, four, six, seven there. Said so not necessarily quantity, but quality in that patch. So we're gonna call it a video, guys. Uh, it's getting late. Mosquitoes are coming out, and we did pretty well on the half freeze. I think I got about 50 in the bag. Really good day. Uh, can't ask for better weather we've been getting a little bit of rain every day ground super moist and we're just getting a, a ton of these guys showing up so i'm gonna take these home we're gonna call it a wrap on this video as always hit me up in comments let me know what you guys think if you guys are just getting started hunting morels uh, don't get discouraged i think it took me like two years before i found my first morel and i remember when i found my first patch of yellows under an old apple tree i just like laid down with them and just absorbed the moment i was so happy and just taking selfies with them and stuff and it was like redemption finally you know but uh don't get discouraged if you're in the northeast ash trees white ash if they're still alive it's better most of ours are dead here if not all of them elm trees same thing but my highest percentage spot for the yellows as i mentioned before is the old apple trees not thorn apple, talking real apple, like old cider apple trees that are being overgrown by hardwoods. For the half freeze, it's not so much about the apple trees, uh, more just the mixed hardwoods. You know, if you have some ash trees, poplar, definitely a really high percentage spot. Oak and maple mixed in is fine. Just want to look for that sparse undergrowth, um, not really heavy undergrowth, kind of sparse leaf cover, sparse undergrowth. That seems to be the... Uh, highest percentage areas for these. So hit me up in comments. Let me know what you guys think and I will catch you next video.